my god. Oh yeah, that feels way better, boys. Oh gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what's going on in the car. We still got to swap out this bushing, this bushing, and the bushings down here. Um, other than that, it's pretty much ready to be transferred in. Um, we also got uh, bushing inserts from ECS that go, uh, these, these hats come off, and they go down in here and kind of fill the gap to help uh, stiffen up the diff a bit, help with launches. So, like I said, we got autocross. On Sunday, today's Monday, so I made more progress than what I anticipated I was going to today, uh, which leaves me a good time tomorrow to get those bushings switched, which is probably going to be a pain in the ass, and get everything put on the new subframe, and then that gives me two days to get it installed in the car. I'm going to get a line, autocross Sunday, then on the 28th or whatever that Saturday is, last Saturday of the month, we're going up to the quarter mile at uh, VMP near Richmond, Virginia, I think. Have an MQB day up there. So hopefully go back up there, beat my personal, my goal is to beat my personal best to the eighth and uh, really see what it does in the quarter because I don't have a good quarter mile for this car. I think the best I had on shitty roads was like a 12.6. But like, I don't even know. It wasn't great. So we're going up there, try and uh, definitely get into the low 12s with it. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Really excited. All right, guys, we're back for day two. Haven't been recording much. I got the baby out here with me. Um, so we did this side of the bushings, or this side of the wishbone already. Did these bushings. Not too terrible. Um, like I said, I froze them, so they kind of went in easy. You could just put them in with a hammer, honestly. They almost fell right in. So that's those. The next one we're getting out is the one that goes right there. And I already got it out. My tool bottomed out. So I had to uh, grab an 18 to put on the end of it to push it out, but it came out pretty easily. So this is what the stock bushing looks like. It's just, uh, you can literally, you can't see it on camera, but I can f kind of flex it with my fingers. It's not like a, I don't even know how to explain it, but the rubber in there is just not great. So we swap these out for some nice metal ones. I'm gonna go grab one out of the freezer real quick. I'll show them to you side by side. I should have did that for the other ones, but I'll link. Um, so I did this all on my Golf R as well. So you guys can look back on my build series and see like an actual like step-by-step -step install for all this. Um, when I did it on the Golf. But I'm gonna go grab one of these. We'll show you, get it done. I think I'm only gonna do these bushings for today. Maybe set it inside the subframe. Um, Caitlin's not feeling too great, so I got the baby out of here with me and I don't want to disturb her too much. She's knocked out now, finally. When I brought her out of here, she was awake. I put her to sleep. I rocked her to sleep out here in the driveway and then set her in there. So we'll see how long she uh, stays asleep for. But that's why I gave myself like extra time this week. I figured to set the alignment for Friday. That way, if anything, like today, this happened, um, we'd have some time. So if I can get this set into the subframe tonight, maybe even connected. Um, That'll be great. That means tomorrow I can wrap up everything on the subframe and Haldex itself and uh, be ready to toss back in the car, which is kind of a pain. Last time I did it, I had two floor jacks. This time I only have one. And I had two people and now I only have one. So I have about half the uh, amount of things to assist me in doing this. But this time I actually know what I'm doing. And yeah, anyway. You guys can see the difference between the two. It's already starting to get some frost on it, so we'll cut the zip tie off and see if it just falls right in real quick. I doubt it'll fall, just fall right in, but I don't know. Be cool if it did, though. All right, break the press back out real quick. Next day again, guys. I am shirtless. It is very hot. Everybody, say hi to Apex. Apex hey, boy. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. You're just a gorgeous boy, aren't you? Yeah, you are. It's hot out here, ain't it? It's hot as hell. Anyway, so we got the ECS bushing inserts in. Obviously, the diff is on the car. We just put the toe arms in down there. 
All the bushings are in. I kind of had to beat them up. We're about to install this side of the wishbones. These have these little um, uh, washers in here. And these um, have like an offset. So not each. I have to show you guys when I take it out. Like this one's kind of... The hole in this plate isn't always in the center. It can be up a little bit or down a little bit. And that's going to dictate... Um, like how you fix your roll center I believe so I have mine set to max so if your car is lowered um, a decent amount I think that's what the book calls for we're about to look again my car my I, these were adjusted when it was on my golf R and that car was pretty slim so I might have to move these up one but for now we're just gonna leave it where it was and go test and if we don't like it we'll just pop these back out it's super simple and uh, raise them up one but and cut these zip ties off get these bad boys in after that we'll get the sway bar mounted and then we'll get the um camber arms on and then um i gotta get those plugs in for the diff we gotta wrap the hard brake lines under the car in some tape so it doesn't chafe against the uh, subframe here and what else oh get the level sensor installed so there's a bunch of little things that need to get done before we can toss this in it's wednesday night i'd like to have this guy ready to go in mounted like not mounted but like on the jack under the car ready to get put in that way tomorrow is just fighting to get it where it's supposed to be because now everything you know is solid bushings it's hard to get things to move the way you want them to because there's solid bushings everywhere so oh and we put the new uh revised top hats on as well so Here's my little update. Back to work. I'm sweating my ass off out here in the Virginia humidity. You want to give him a kiss? Mwah! All right. Everything is on and tightened. Besides the track bar and the level sensor. This is a new one. That one's from my Mark 7. Obviously the exhaust and you know the little things, but everything that can be on this right now is on right now so next up to play a balancing act on the jack get a position under the car we gotta kind of have it at an angle so we can line the drive shaft up into the hole and uh, not get the trailing arms snagged on any brake lines or anything oh actually I gotta get under there tape up the brake lines and do that now all right guys we are back this is Thursday after work Soon, trying to get this mounted so I'm laying on the ground with my leg wrapped over the handle here to pump the handle as I am teeter-tottering the subframe on a single jack I excuse me grab the jack stand here to help me keep it level when I need a break to stop and make sure things are getting aligned properly so uh, we're a little bit off of there you got to start at the right front bolt and then left rear bolt so those are the first two that go in as you can see they're kind of off so what i'm gonna have to do i'm gonna have to go in more and to the left some so i'm doing that by holding on the some frame with one hand uh laying down on the other and just kind of like pushing the the jack by hand um to where i need it to go so um Maybe I'll put it on a time lapse under here real quick. You guys can just watch. So here I was kind of wondering why the subframe wouldn't go forward, but I got the two bolts I wanted in, I was like, all right, I'll get the drive shaft bolts in now. And I, I didn't line it up for putting that second bolt in like a dummy. So one bolt, then drive shaft, then the second bolt, then we can go from there. So just took that bolt back out, gonna get under there, line the, the drive shaft, get the three bolts hand tight, and then uh, get back to line everything. And the drive shaft won't get torqued down until after the subframe does, I think. And everything's falling into place. So far, so good. The struts are going right where they're supposed to. Trailing arms are going right there, they're supposed to. Just like getting the trailing arms exactly where they need to be, like holes lined up is tough. Because of 
all the spherical bushings in the subframe now, it like, you have like no flex. So you really gotta either get a, you know, like a wrench or a flathead up into a spot to help pry to get it to where you wanna go. It's just sure like force is like hard. That's how like hard those bushings are to move. It's pretty insane. Just to think about how just sloppy OEM bushings are versus these. It's mind blowing, especially once you feel it. It's crazy. All right, I'm go back under here, fix my F up, and uh, keep going. We're making great time. If it wasn't so dang hot and sweaty, I'd drink a beer right now because I'm so dang happy. Pretty much everything's together. Only thing left to do is the brakes, the aero covers for the control arms, the exhaust, make sure my um, studs are tight, put the wheels on, put the car down. Um, give you guys a little look before my battery dies. Um, most things are done. Like uh, the brakes are still hanging. We got. The wiring stuff in, uh, everything's done. Drive shafts connected. We got the level sensor on. Halbex is plugged in. Um, I had to, I had to uh, add some extra tape to the brake lines. As you can see, like, well, you probably can't see. No, you can't see. But they do, like, what comes with the kit originally, there's like sleeves that go over these, but I guess I left those on my golf R, so. Duct tape will do for now. I don't think it's gonna rub through. Uh, I put it on there pretty freaking thick. I do gotta put the clips in for these still. Um, what else? Oh, and the track bar mounts there, here, and here after with the exhaust. Gotta... If you were ever wondering, your exhaust can be uh, just lifted up, just like this. It pretty much balances itself here. Oh, 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 I take that back. Oh boy. Inside, sir. Go in. See ya. Thanks for celebrating with me. Go in. All right, guys. Everything's done. Wheels are on. Everything's done. Everything's tightened, double checked. Arrow. This is the track bar I was just talking about. For some reason, I thought it went under the exhaust and above it. So it was kind of, I had to puzzle piece it up in there to get it. But that's in there that adds some extra rigidity so the drag version of the subframe doesn't have that i have the track version so this adds more rigidity to it um yeah, really scraped up this 034 motorsport uh, sub or a uh, sway bar over the years sheesh i didn't wind up putting my mag plugs in i'll do that at the first change when i whenever i do with my brakes once 034 comes out with front rotors um and lines I'll do all the fluids. I'll do front diff, trans, rear aldex, rear diff, brake fluid, all that. Same time, FCP, all that stuff. Get it out of the way. So we get the toe arms, get the camera arms, real nice billet jaws. A lot of adjustability to them. They get adjusted right there. Um, Nope, yep, got the spherical bushings in there, spherical bushings in here. <sighs> so many things. I'm so tired. I'm exhausted. This is like easily over 12 hours over the past couple days, plus going to work every day. Thank God she's the best. And uh, doesn't scream at me for doing this and watches the baby, so. Everything's on. Time to lower to the ground and go for a drive after I clean off because I am absolutely filthy. I tell you guys, I got to drive the M all week. I had so much fun in this thing. The other morning, yesterday morning, I raced uh, the next gen up V8 M3 on the way to work, made my day. And then the day before that, there was an RX-8 I've messed around with, uh, like a F, oh shit, F80, 335, or yeah, 335. and. What was it? There was another car too. As soon as I get in her car, it attracts all the other cars. I never ever run into anybody cool. 
when I'm in this. It's upsetting. Oh, oh yeah. She definitely needs new fender liners. And this thing, freaking. Oh, I rubbed them all off, but it like rubs real good in there. It's so freaking meaty. I love this car. It needs a lot. Of, it needs basically what I just did to my car to this. It needs all the bushings replaced, basically, except for the couple that we did, and definitely some more uh, some love. If anybody knows of any good bumpers, M3 rear and M3 front bumpers, we'd love to have those. Um, or she would. We need to get this car painted, but we need bumpers first. She just ordered a tune and DPF, all the DPF delete stuff for the truck. So that'll be a project here in a couple weeks to get uh, the deletes all done on this. She said she's gonna keep it for the long haul. So might as well get the deletes done, get the better uh, fuel mileage out of it. And it'll sound pretty cool, but yeah. Say hi. It's not our parents that pay attention. Nice shirt, yeah. Anyway, she's back on the ground. We're gonna go drive it around, make sure it feels, you know, everything's decent. The car looks jacked up right now because it hasn't moved yet since being on stands, but we'll make sure the camera doesn't look too crazy. I think I had it set at like negative two or negative 2.1 with like a 10th inch out of tow. So we'll see come tomorrow. I'm gonna zero the tow front and rear Put the rear camber two degrees and leave the front camber whatever it's at. Now we're gonna be adding like 1.4 or 1.6 with the 034 uh, camber mounts that are going in the front, and then we need to order the shock mounts for the rear and the Verkline front subframe. Which it's actually, I, I didn't realize because okay, so I already have the upper and lower insert for the dog bone. I don't have the dog bone mount itself, and um, I don't have a tie roll sport locking kit. Well, you add all those up together, and you look at the price of the subframe, the Brookline subframe, and then you think about how much you can get back with selling the aluminum subframe. It's only a couple hundred bucks out of pocket to get the Brookline one, and you save more weight, it's more rigid, you don't need a locking kit, you don't need crazy uh, inserts and stuff, because the one built into it is, is great. Um, so it's like it makes a lot of sense and you have more access you're not gonna get bolts and nuts stuck in your subframe for years at a time ask me how I know but that one's it's tubular you drop anything down in your engine bay it's gonna actually fall to the ground if not the only other place you can really get stuck on is the uh, the rack or the arms and that like never happens so I've literally had bolts in my subframe for over a year that I've found and it makes it easier to look for leaks and stuff. So that's definitely going to be the move. I just don't know. Like I really, I could order it right now. I can only order one thing. I can either get the intercooler or the subframe. And I feel like as soon as I order the subframe, then Do88 is going to drop the Evo 4 intercooler. So I'm just going to wait till the intercooler comes out. That's going to benefit me more uh, now, especially with it getting super hot. It's already super freaking humid here and stuff. So wait for the intercooler and then we'll get the subframe. Uh, later this season sometime anyway let's get cleaned up go for a drive all right guys we are driving check out this hot steering wheel um my steering wheel is a slight bit well the road isn't straight right now but um my alignment tomorrow will center my wheel up from doing them uh ball joints anyway car feels great I'm in dynamic mode so the suspensions on stiff and it really doesn't feel really okay so first let's go with NVH noise harshness noise vibration harshness I don't feel anything um, more like I don't feel anything crazy no vibrations in my R I could hear I'm on the brakes right now you could like hear the rear rotors when they grabbed uh, in this car, you can. I don't. It could be because I have my back seats in, and uh, you know, extra sound deadening and Audis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I and I had uh, what you call it, slotted rotors on those. So there's that. I don't hear anything. I was actually like kind of expecting, you know, some extra something, noise, vibration, you know, related. I don't at all. So that is great. Um, what I do feel is like. There's obviously less um, less room for error, less you know, like we got rid of basically all the bushings in the back. The only place there is still bushings is um, 
in the diff, the Haldex, which got inserts, and then the struts have their bushing still. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Everywhere else has a, a spherical bushing, so. It feels great. I mean, it, I rode around in comfort mode for the first lap to get the oil warmed up a little bit, and I, I really don't feel a difference um, at all. So it'll be interesting on the highway, hitting some bumps at, you know, 60, 70, 80 mile an hour, but just riding around here, it doesn't feel like anything, which is great. I mean, that's awesome. The real change you're going to feel is on, is on the track when everything, you know, your alignment stays and all that. Only thing I really need now is a Haldex tune and you know a little bit louder of an exhaust, downpipe, intercooler, braking, you know, the use. <laughs> Feels great. I'm very happy. I wish there wasn't so much dang traffic right now. I could go bang on the car or something, but I do have a little road down the way, and I mean there isn't much to it. It's a little like S. And I have I think I have a spot to do a dig over here, but we'll see. We are going a quarter mile on the 28th. Um, we'll see if we get some improvement there, which I suspect suspect we will. And uh, I think that's all I got for now. So I've been like hitting potholes on purpose and I don't really notice a difference other than like the car feels more together. It's like going from uh, a track suit like wearing sweatpants to wearing like a suit like everything's nice and tight and like how it's supposed to be like it feels so much better but it, there's like no I don't know how it really it just feels great everything's like tight like it's supposed to be who doesn't like tight give her a little pull here it definitely feels like it puts the power down better everything's locked in the transient response on this turbo is just amazing, especially with the stock downpipe. So we're sitting, we'll bring it down to like, let's see, like 35, 3,000 here. Like there's no waiting. God, this thing feels so good. I should have brought the GoPro. I left it at the house. There's this road up here. I can't do it with one hand maybe I can I don't want to go too crazy on it. it's a baseball game going on right now so who knows what oh yeah that feels good going around that turn there I came around here the first time with see now there's damn traffic god that feels good Woo! there's traffic though man all right i'm gonna try and get a dig real quick for y'all and i'm gonna call it a night because i'm just rambling on i am tired my teeth hurt from my braces talking funny i'm starving i want to go hang out with my daughter all right real quick while we don't have traffic oh my god oh yeah that feels way better boys oh gosh Wow, wow, no way, holy moly, wow, okay, that's where you feel the biggest improvement, holy shit, whoa, brother, dang, wow, okay, I need to calm down, wow, I took so much slop out of the drivetrain, holy crap, wow, I am... Wow, all right, we're really gonna see. So my best 60 foot so far, I think was a 1.71. So when we go to the drag strip at the end of the month, we should def, I really think we'll be in the 1.6s stock. That's a stock tune. There is no tune on this car, no race box, no race chip, no racing line shit, no uh, JB4, nothing. This is just Audi tune, no nothing. Man. Yeah, I should have, when I was just in OBD-11 to clear codes for the brakes because I had to turn the car on and all the stuff. Anyway, I should have got in there and got the codes for the Haldex. I need to send that to United Motorsport to see if they can tune this thing. Holy guacamole. All right, let's do it one more. Hopefully there's no cops up here. Wow, this thing 
feels dope. I'm so happy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna leave it on that note. I'm gonna go hit this S turn without a camera in my hand and I don't get some food. It is almost eight o'clock. I'm starving. Thanks for watching, guys. I don't know if I split this into two videos or not, but if you watch both or watch the whole thing, you're the real MVPs. 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 I appreciate it. Be on the lookout for a autocross video coming this weekend, and I'll record at uh, Euro Pros tomorrow if they allow me to when I get my alignment. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you on the flip flop.